Hey, what's up guys, JQ with Tech Creation. So now the Gears 3 Frontier model differentiates from the Gears 3 Classic, beginning with support for LTE, meaning that you can use this watch standalone, as well as also being able to tether it to your smartphone via Bluetooth. Samsung pushes the Frontier as the LTE model and the Classic as the Bluetooth model, leaving some to assume that if you want service, get this one, if not, get this one. But that's not the case. They have the Gears 3 Classic, the Gears 3 Frontier, and then the Gears 3 Frontier with LTE. I have the Gears 3 Frontier with Bluetooth, no LTE. So let's get started. So I've been waiting a while for a smartwatch that I can really just throw on and not babysit it too much like I did with other fancy smartwatches like the Moto 360. And I think I found it. It's casual yet durable. And I just can't stress how nice it looks and feels in person. It's made out of a 316L grade stainless steel that's used in a lot of analog watches. So you're getting a very durable watch. I actually dropped it on the wood floor as well as bumped my hand against the brick wall by accident. And I just had to wipe off the residue and everything seems to be just fine, surprisingly. And even those small details like these textured buttons are a nice touch. Now for some, this watch could be a little manly with its 12.9 millimeter thickness. Personally, I have no problem with a more bold looking watch. It actually sits very comfortable against my wrist. And a lot of that has to do with the 22 millimeter active silicone band that comes attached with the watch out the box. And they've also included a smaller one for those people with smaller wrists out there. You can tell that it plays nice with water as the watch itself could be submerged up to five feet on the water for 30 minutes thanks to its IP68 rating, making it dust and water resistant. Now to the right of the watch, you have that tiny little microphone that you speak into during phone calls, which I personally think is the optimal placement if you happen to wear your watches on your left hand, I find that it's a lot more ideal since the audio travels in that direction. Now adjacent to it, you'll find your built-in speakerphone to your left. And of course, what would a smartwatch be without all the bells and whistles of GPS, Wi-Fi, as well as NFC and MST for using mobile payments with Samsung Pay, as well as a 380 milliamp hour battery. You also get the usual wall adapter as well as a micro USB wireless charging cradle, that also happens to be magnetic. So I can see this being great if you happen to have slanted surfaces in your house. Now it does use the Qi wireless standard, I tried it. So you should be able to use any Qi wireless charger out there just so long that you find a sweet spot. Now it took me about 11 to 12 minutes to get everything set up from zero. And you wanna go ahead and make sure that the Samsung Gear app is installed on your Android device. And of course, make sure Bluetooth is turned on on your phone. It's all a pretty self-explanatory setup, but that is a minor complaint though. I do wish the pairing process was a bit more seamless, like let's say the Apple Watch and Android Wear where you only need to download one app, so. So right away, you'll notice it's 1.3 inch touchscreen, and that is a Super AMOLED display, by the way. And you have a 278 PPI, so everything looks a lot sharper than it even needs to be on this tiny screen. Easy to see outdoors, it gets really bright. Now pressing the home button from the home screen will actually pull up your app dial so you can spin through your apps for quick access. And then as I mentioned earlier, you have that rotating bezel that's used to navigate around Titan OS. I think it's just one of the most intuitive and original methods for navigating a smartwatch in my opinion. It has an Exynos 7270 chipset with 768 megabytes of RAM. And with the updated version of Tizen OS, it translates to one of the most smooth smartwatch UIs that I've experienced. So real quick, swiping down, you pull down some toggles like brightness adjustment, volume, do not disturb, etc., etc. Cycling through the bezel to your right shows you available widgets, which you can add or subtract with a bunch of different options and cycling to your left shows your notifications. Now, as I mentioned, we do get GPS built into the watch directly. So you can use this as your navigator if you wanted to. So basically you just have to download the Navigator mini app from the Samsung Gear Store, as well as from the Google Play Store. And as you can see, it's a pretty popular app. So this gives you turn-by-turn -turn navigation for walking and driving. And I used it while driving for about 25 minutes. And it could be a little flaky sometimes with the GPS, but I don't actually blame that on the watch. I blame that on the app itself because the app kept saying waiting for a signal despite my location being on. And I've never had that issue with Google Maps. And even if it did work, just to put it out there, I found that looking down at your wrist while driving to be very distracting, especially if you wear the watch with the same arm you steer your wheel with. It's a cool idea, but it's not as practical as it sounds. And that just goes for any smartwatch, not this one. Just use that as a bit of precaution, that's all. Now we also have a built-in heart rate sensor in its usual location. 
And I mentioned this in many videos before, I wouldn't rely on heart rate monitors on a smartwatch. They're just not as accurate as say fitness chest straps. And even those are not as accurate as EKGs. So instead I think that runners, joggers, athletes might benefit more from S Health. I find S Health to be a nice companion for the gears three for counting steps, calorie counting and setting target workouts. And in my opinion, I think it promotes activity a lot better than a lot of other smartwatch apps out there with target goals as well as the watch being able to detect what kind of workout without you having to do a single thing as well as providing health nudges to offer encouragement via notifications like for example i was sitting down a little while ago and it said get up and get moving and then once i started moving it said good job so we all need a pat on the back sometimes it even did a great job at monitoring my sleep so i think that the gs3 is one of the better fitness companion options out there that's not actually a dedicated fitness watch now, my main complaints with the Samsung Gear watches is just how limited that their Gear app store is. I would like to see official apps for the Gear for like, let's say Uber, for example, to where I'm able to request an Uber from my wrist, the same way you're able to do on the Apple Watch. You can't do that here. And also just like support and integration for home automation apps like If and let's say Harmony, for example. Now, all isn't doomed though. You do get third-party support for apps like Nest Thermostat and Philips Hue Control. And the Philips Hue alternative app seems to work pretty good. I can deal with it. It has an attractive design and the toggles work fast. You can even view your scenes and groups as well. So yeah, at least we get that. Now, despite the lack of app support, you do get notifications for almost every single app on your phone, as well as being able to dismiss them in real time. And I'm happy about that because you can even perform simple actions within some apps like archiving an email or replying, for example, or like let's say for your music apps, while there is no deep support, like I can't view tracks or playlists, I can still skip and play pause, adjust the music volume, etc., etc. And in terms of core functions, that's more than good enough for me on an everyday basis. So I actually spent a lot of time and had more fun customizing the watch because watch faces, there's a lot of that. They have a ton of free ones as well as paid ones as well. And I downloaded a bunch as well as even bought a few. Check out this Iron Man reactor watch face. Or check out this sick cyber animated one. Or check out this creepy eyeball looking one. FYI, these will drain your battery, so keep that in mind. And now I can find my missing Dragon Balls. Text messaging on the Gear S3, or any smartwatch for that matter, still isn't the most ideal thing to do. So with the new Tizen update, a new handwriting mode has been introduced, which I actually did find a bit more practical and intuitive to use. So I would recommend highly using this instead of wasting your time trying to type on that T9 keyboard on this tiny 1.3 inch screen. Take advantage of the quick reply options or instead use emojis. Because if you're trying to compose a text message that's a paragraph long with your arm in that one position, your arm is gonna begin to cramp up really, really quick. So pressing and holding the back button will launch Samsung Pay. And at first it'll prompt you to install Samsung Pay, but after you get past that, you can manage your payment cards via the Gear app on your smartphone. So yeah, once you've signed in and you added all your cards and you're all set up, you basically just launch Samsung Pay and then tap Pay and hold your wrist next to the available card reader or NFC reader. So I noticed often I had to use the credit option even when using a debit card. So as long as the cashier knows what's going on, everything should work fine. I've had little to no issues. Another thing I wanna mention is that you don't need your smartphone to use Samsung Pay. It actually uses tokens and you can make up to five transactions while not tethered to your smartphone. So briefly put, I spent about 10 minutes talking to a T-Mobile rep as she explained to me this whole eSIM service thing. And mid conversation, she complimented how clear the call quality was before I could even ask her. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. And she also came through on my end very clear. Now it does get pretty loud, but you might have to hold it up to your ear in noisier environments. But all in all, I mean, I had a blast using the Gear S3 to handle phone calls. I actually wanted to call people. <laughs> so finally, let's talk about the battery. So Samsung claims three days of use. To put things into perspective, right out the box, it was at 81% when I powered it on and it was at 4.39 p.m. And I didn't put it on the cradle to the very next day when it hit 3% at 12.13 a.m. So that's about 31 hours of use before I ever even charged it myself. So in conclusion, who is the Gear S3 for? Well, if you're health conscious and enjoy monitoring your physical activity and calorie counts, if you're someone who drives a lot and wants hands-free phone conversations, but you don't have a fancy Bluetooth system in your car or a headset, this is perfect. If you're into mobile payments and evolving technology and you would like the option to leave your wallet at home, and if you like all of the above, plus the ability to receive and dismiss notifications from your smartphone on your wrist, then this smartwatch was made for you. 
You guys know what to do. If you enjoyed this video, show me some love by pressing that like button. And for my new visitors, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on some awesome tech videos. And go ahead and drop those comments down below and let me know what you guys think of the Samsung Gear S3 and if this smartwatch happens to be for you. And as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.